Hey listeners, welcome back to another episode. I'm Ricky. And I'm Brittany. And we are Paper Paper Screen. Screen. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Fabulous. Hell yeah. (laughs) So what have you been up to, Brittany? This week, I went to see another podcast, but it's like a live show, but they don't record it for like an episode like some podcasts do. Uh But it was the canceled podcast with Tana Mojo and Brooke Scoville. Oh, do you, you know them? No, but you ended up going. Yeah, I did. And I brought a friend because I was like, it was out in Brea, which yeah. is like 45 minutes away, which seemed cute. I mean, I was only there like to go to the improv. But yeah, I'm really glad I went. It was really fun. The venue was so nice. Was there a lot of people? Yes, but there's like, if you think about like the venue, it was like three sections, like three big sections of seating. The very back section wasn't filled, but they said like it was a sold out show. So I don't know if that means like they just like don't offer that seating or... They're just saying that. I have no idea. But for the final part, they wrote a bunch of questions like from Reddit onto like Jenga pieces. And so they'd like pick a Jenga piece and read it. Oh, fun. And they had their friend Lila come out. Um, and she's this like really like wild, super fun um, like trans woman. Mm-hmm. And she, <laughs> one of the last questions Tana was supposed to answer was like, who out of all like the influencers and everyone that she's hooked up with had the smallest dick? And she was just like, that is so mean. Like, I can't, I can't answer. It's so mean. And then Lila. I, so here's the thing. You know, the song that's like, you could be a dad. Yeah. Okay. So whatever that artist's name is, I don't know their name. They, go. they hooked up and they go, you know, this artist named Dick is small. And he peed on me. <laughs> And like, uh, even like Tana and Brooke like start dying, la- like everyone just dying laughing. It was just like just chaos. It, this is an alleged thing too. So, what's new with you, Ricky? Well, I recently just went to Warner Brothers Studios for the first time, and that was really cool. We got to go in the back lot and saw like a lot of the sets of like different shows like like Abbott Elementary or Young Sheldon but yeah it was really really cool got to see like the Harry Potter and DC um exhibit too which was like the last thing that's awesome yeah very cool I took some pictures there was like a thing in the Harry Potter exhibit using the wand oh (laughs) that's so cool and I was like um that's it (laughs) <laughs> I thought there was going to be like some cool magic, you know, like in Universal oh. Studios, but no. <laughs> yeah, the guy that was like running it, he was like, great job. We'll call you for the next Harry Potter film. I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've been up to. So I guess we should go to our, our topic of discussion. Tonight. Yes. Today's episode, what are we talking about? Today we are going to talk about what was rumored to be the biggest Oscar award show win for A24, and that movie is the melancholy romance, coming of age, kind of, Past Lives. Past Lives. We have lots to talk about because I had mixed feelings Because I've heard so many people talk about good things about this film. Mm -hmm. So I had kind of high expectations. And when I watched it, it was not giving. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No offense, but I'm like, are you people okay? Did we watch the same movie? But we'll get into it. This film follows Nora and she's, we meet her as a young girl in Korea and her family has decided to move out of Korea and they moved to Canada. We kind of jump ahead and she's now living in New York. I think she's a, a graduate student or just out of grad sc- or school or something, but. Yeah, but she also has a childhood friend. The whole theme of the movie is like about Inyun. They had some sort of connection in their past lives. So it could have been like you were their child or their spouse. That actually plays into, have you ever he- heard of um soul groups or soul pods or something? 
it's like a the belief that like we're reincarnated but like in every life we always have the same like i don't know five or ten people that are somehow in our life no oh. is it like love is blind <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen that Okay, so this film stars Greta Lee, who is from Russian Doll, if you've ever seen that, mm -hmm. Teo, and John Magaro. I know Greta from, she was on an episode of Girls where she plays this oh. like, this like really pretentious artist guy. Um, she plays his assistant and she like is coming back to his place and like uh, unloading the groceries and um marty who's like one of the main girls in the show girls she's there with him and he opens up the ice cream that greta had gotten a part of all these groceries and there's a bite out of it and he's like did you take a bite of my ice cream and she's like and Gre greta's character is just like yeah are, are you fucking serious like what do you give like do you give a shit you know and then he fires her and it's like so that's like how i know her it was like the first time i saw her or anything <laughs> i'm glad to see that she's like thriving Back to the film. Mm -hmm. uh, this is written and directed by Celine Song, as I mentioned. Directorial debut. Love that for her. Yes. <laughs> uh, women in film. <laughs> <laughs> women in cinema. So let's talk about our movie experience. I, yeah, same as you. I kept seeing, you know, a lot of buzz around this movie. Like, oh, there's this quiet drama that's come out, but it's like amazing. And it's going to, you know, like I said, sweep the awards this season. I liked it. I thought it was good. There's like, I think two scenes, two specific scenes I thought really stood out, at least for me. But like, you know, I'm, I'm also watching this like I probably shouldn't have like gone in hearing so many people talk about it because then you do kind of set expectations and that doesn't mean they don't meet the expectations it just means like i kind of had a preconceived idea of like yeah and i did not cry and you know i'm a crier so how was your experience so i didn't get to watch this in the movie theater i rented this Overall, I liked it. I don't think it's as great as people make it out to be. I think it's a little overhyped. So I just didn't connect to it as much as like other people. That's why the movie wasn't for me. Maybe because the demographic of people that went to see it have like a lot of regret. <laughs> and so like when they went yeah. to this movie, they were like, I'm full of regret. Yeah, it, it like definitely seems like it would hit a soft spot for someone who has like the quote one that got away. Yeah, or it's like, what if, you know? Right. The thing I, I kind of like how I interpreted it was the fact that she left Korea, like her family. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm basing this off the conversation the mom has with um, the guy's mom when they're little kids. She, she like, she just tells her they're like sitting on a park bench and she's like, we're leaving. Like, we're leaving, we're going to a different country, da, da, da. And the, and the lady's just like, why? Like, yeah. you're going to leave? And then um, just jumping ahead and everything. And I think when the guy reconnects with her, I kind of took it as like something more about your culture and who you are. You know what I mean? Like, because she got so like westernized. Yeah. And that's obviously something I can't like really relate to. But like the concept of it, I was like, damn, that would be really intense to like mm -hmm. to be able to like. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like to have your someone who is like your age, your friend, and they stayed and like get to, you know, like kind of like live vicariously through them kind of. And then uh, we'll get to it later. But there's also a conversation she has with her husband that like kind of talks about that. Oh, yeah. Give us the budget. OK, so past lives had a budget of 12 million. Like, that's so in the industry, that's like low, but it's like pretty good for a first time director. So how much did it rake in? 10 million. Oh. And that's before like VOD. I'm sure it's actually a higher number. That was just like the box office. Yeah. Like the first weekend. What about gross? This is, I thought this was gross. Oh. This is gross. <laughs> oh, oh, so it took a little bit of time to get to that 10 million. <laughs> yeah. But hey, that's really good. I mean, damn, like as we've learned with some other films, you might you might spend 35 million and only see 8 million come back. Right. Let's talk about the relationship between Nora and Hayson. They grew up with each other. Yeah. They like live up the street from each other too, right? Yeah. And I thought that was cute like when they like walked home mm -hmm. with each other 
and then they had to like split and you could see like the metaphor of her climbing up the hill and then he's like in the same place yeah what did you think of their relationship i was a i guess a little confused by it because when they were kids it they didn't seem like they would really like walk away thinking of the other. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It did feel fast. Yeah. Like maybe if we would have seen like one get hurt and comfort the other and like them have a sleepover, like something to like yeah. kind of build it more. But all they did was like kind of show them holding hands. Yeah, they and they always kind of almost acted really melancholy together. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think in just regards to like, I think you would reconnect. I think everyone has done that, like especially with like Facebook and all that. Like you'd be like, hey, like I connected with some childhood friends we had um, and it was actually really funny. So the sister remembered me. Like she added me and she was like, do you remember me? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I'm not an idiot. Like, <laughs> of course I remember you. And her brother was my age and when we were like little tiny kid babies, kids or whatever, yeah. um, for some reason they had us kiss. Like, like you know, like when adults are like, oh, look at that. So cute. I know your face is they like. made you kiss? Yeah. Ew, what kind of perverted parents are <laughs> just kidding? <laughs> <laughs> and he has literally no memory of his time in Minnesota. So I was like, I was like, oh, you don't remember like when we stayed at this cabin? And he's like, sorry, I honestly like don't remember anything from Minnesota. And I was like, damn, that kiss was that bad. <laughs> you, like, blocked out of your memory i remember that trip so well because we also all five of so it's like my sister and then his his sister and yeah. they're the same age and then me and him and then my older brother and the we were like in a separate cabin from our parents and we had a bat and i was and i like love animals and like that bats were really cool when i was a little kid mm -hmm. so i was like oh my god we have a bat but like ad the adults were like you know grabbing a broom like get out of the cabin like trying to like catch the bat or whatever because apparently yeah. they're dangerous but for anyone listening i literally didn't really know this until like a couple months ago but bats like can carry rabies and it's like actually <laughs> extremely dangerous to be around them so you like, didn't know that I, I mean i thought it was more like some bats i didn't know it was like you should always practice caution with bats <laughs> <laughs> do you have any like special childhood like what ifs yeah i kind of think about like people in high school that i'm like what happened to you that's like all i wonder uh, yeah because you know some people in high school they like peaked in high school and uh -huh. they like live in high school i feel like those people all like got married and like have kids yeah because they like are stuck in high school yeah and they like didn't leave the town yeah i don't know there were some guys in like high school that were like hot to me i would like look them up and to see if they're still hot that's so funny <laughs> you want to hear something wild so like shortly after high school like some people had like some people went to college some people just like moved to different states you know like there's a group of guys that just like went to colorado because they just like love snowboarding um <laughs> <laughs> and then which good for them like shout out to yeah. passion like one of these other guys like went to california and this is a no i'm in no way shaming it it's more just like it was so, it like a small world random but he ended up doing like porn but like more like him posing nude kind of things as far as i'm aware but then a friend of mine who's a gay man stumbled upon those on like a porn site Ooh. so like imagine like you're you know you're just like looking at some stuff because you know yeah you just want to see some dick <laughs> and and then you see like a friend from high school just like so random i'm like out of because like think about how much porn has been produced like like photos videos everything yeah. like on the internet like what a fucking small world and i actually have another friend who um had done some porn and someone they know like found it and i was like oh i just God. can't believe like maybe i'm wrong maybe there's not a lot of porn I'm curious to know if there's anyone from my town that did porn. Right. You, and and I don't know how you find them because like usually you have um like a stage name. Um, okay, circling back to the movie. Do you remember the part where like the mom talks to the kid's mom? Yeah. And she's like, it's true that if you leave, you lose things, but you also gain things, too. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a nice quote because it's like, I, f I believe in that. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, it's life. Like, it's kind of like having like a growth mindset. Yeah. We both moved from Minnesota to California. That's true. I lost friendships. Yeah, same. Time. 
time. Time like with people, which I think is the hardest. Now you got me thinking, what if I stayed there during COVID? Dude, oh, I never even thought about that. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> it was dark times for me. <laughs> I thought the cinematography is like really beautiful. That is what stood out to me in this whole film. Mm-hmm. Just like everything about it. It gave me the vibes. And also like how they elongate some scenes too, mm-hmm. like the editing. It kind of reminds me of like Korean dramas. Oh. Yeah. That's if you neat. watch a lot of Korean dramas, it's very poetic mm. the way that they do dialogue yeah. and conversations. It's the vibes. <laughs> I agree with you how it was shot. It was kind of interesting because there were so many scenes like when, hey son, like in New York and it felt really like kind of desolate and like cold. Yeah. Then when you look at like, so when she meets her husband, I like that a lot. I was a little confused because it was like, it's like her mom's house, right? Or is it not? It's like some house. I think I thought it was her parents' house, but it's actually just like a house that writers can like. Oh, yeah. It's an artist retreat. Retreat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for some reason, I thought she was going to her mom's place. So I'm like, I'm like, where's her mom at? Because she's like, you know, walking around the house. Yeah. She just lets herself in. I'm like, um, hello. Right. Have you not seen horror movies? (laughs) And it's like this beautiful, cute little countryside house. Yeah. And then, you know, the man to eventually be her husband shows up. And I'm like, oh, does her mom like rent one of the rooms out? Like I was still confused until like later I was like, oh, it's a whatever. But like when they have their first little like they sit at like um, a table outside and there's like string lights. And yeah. It's like very warm and like romantic. And then that final scene where it's all three of them at that bar and it's like also like lit really romantically and like warm. But then, yeah, so much of the movie, like it it feels cold. Yeah. Oh, my God. I totally forgot about the opening of the film. It's like a conversation between two people who we oh, don't who see are on watching screen. them. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, so do we think that like she's with that guy or with that other guy? Who yeah. do you think? We- <laughs> it's like really funny. It's so I actually really love that part. Yeah, I was like, what is going on? Because it's like these people are people watching, which is what I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're they're yeah speculating because it's like all three of them sitting at the bar and they're not really talking much. Yeah, but they're sitting together and like you can tell there's a vibe because of Inyon. Yeah. And she like looks at the camera mm-hmm. and she's like giving us face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of like um I hate this expression, but it's like what is it? She's got her cake and she's gonna eat it too. <laughs> she's giving us resting bitch face. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about her when she's like in New York. Mm-hmm. Cause like she's in grad school. Yeah, and she's like studying to be a playwright. She's an artist. Writers. But then she kind of has that like, oh, I wonder what happened to so and so. Cause doesn't she look up Hayson first? Gosh, I don't remember, but I know she's like talking to her mom when they talk about him. Oh, and that's part of what triggered it. She was like, mm, now you got me wondering. Yeah, I think maybe she looked him up and then added him or vice versa, but whatever. Yeah, so he's at some bar with like his friends and he gets like the friends request. Yeah, and he didn't he just have a breakup? No, it was his friend. Oh, his friend. Okay. His friend had a breakup and like he, they were all there like trying to comfort him. So whenever she was talking to her mom, it was in Korean, but when she talked to her husband, it was in English. And then with Hae-san, it was... It was just Korean. No, oh, he doesn't speak English, really. Right. right? Okay. I saw this movie once, you guys, so. So did I. (laughs) So Nora meets Arthur, who's now her husband. Oh, his name's Arthur. That's adorable. So they met at the retreat, and then, like, they end up getting married together. So all of this is happening in, what, 12 years? Or 12 years later from when she left. Is when she meets her husband, yeah. They're married. They're living in a little apartment in New York. But does that mean that she got her green card? Yeah, I think it does. I didn't like Hey Song's character. Um, I think I do agree with you, but maybe we I, let's talk about the reasons we didn't love okay. him. He comes to visit Nora in New York because time has passed now, and like 
basically he like waited like 24 years to come see her and she's like happily married but now you want to show up and be like oh hey i'm coming to visit new york you know never been yeah i'm like you waited that long you ghosted her oh right right she even mentioned that like she went to go visit soul and like hit him up but he like never met up with her who is so I'm this like, guy? Yeah, I'm like, you're basically estranged now. Yeah, he. it was kind of interesting because we got so much more development with her than with him. And I kind of couldn't really... So like, and maybe this is just me projecting my ideas onto the characters, but like with her, I felt like there was like more of like a dynamic about she has this life with her husband in New York and they have this like lovely relationship blah 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 but then here's this guy that like she when she looks at him she sees herself and then like oh this is what i left like i left who i would have been in korea or whatever you know because they don't seem like they have that much of a connection as far as like what they talk about it seems more like when she looks at him she's got uh like a fantasy in her head or something you know what i mean yeah that's just how I interpreted it, I guess. And then so with him, I just kind of thought he was just kind of there. Yeah, I was just kind of like, she's like married, like now you're going to steal her. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't necessarily get the impression that that like it was a sexual um intention, but it, it obviously it's some um, kind of strange boundaries. Yeah. And I'm like, you're a toxic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, you show up here and you think you can just take her away. Yeah. You're a toxic bitch. <laughs> yeah. I was mad. And then when they had that whole conversation at the bar, mm. I was like livid. I was like, this is inappropriate because they're talking to each other in Korean. He's sitting there like feeling awkward. Yeah. But, you know, he like can pick out certain words because right. he knows a little bit of Korean. Still, that must have been a really awkward situation for him to just be sitting there and listening to them have this like private conversation. Mm-hmm. At least it should have been. Because yeah. they were having a deep ass conversation about like what if she like never left Seoul and like what it would have looked like between him and her. It was just like, dude, get over it. Uh. <laughs> I'm like the person that's like, just move on. Yeah. Like stop living in the past. Yeah. That was really sad. I really liked the whole thing with like I thought the best scene in the film is with her and her husband in bed when they're yeah. talking. And just because it's I like how it's shot feels really intimate feels really like really a natural realistic conversation but I thought it was like so so compelling just like his honesty with her and and, like the vulnerability and he goes do you dream in Korean (laughs) oh I forgot he says that because he's like he feel he's like I feel like there's an entire different like universe a part of you that I will never have a you know I'll never like he'll never understand yeah and I thought that was like really because that that's like I think that's how I would feel so she has this like male childhood friend you know so I'm sure like for the husband it's like this guy has something I literally cannot compete with Right. Which is like a part of your identity, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I really like that. And then even just like the scene where they the guys meet at their apartment and it's kind of weird, kind of not. I don't know. It was a little bit awkward because I'm like, oh, God, like, what's he going to (laughs) do? I thought thought Arthur was going to be like, you fucking bitch, why are you here? (laughs) Yeah, because he kind of he said like a greeting in Korean. And that there's also just like while we're talking about honesty, when her and her husband are in the bathroom, like brushing their teeth. She's like, he's just so Korean. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There's like stuff about him that's like so korean because i think arthur's like are you attracted to him and then she's like kind of but he's just so korean yeah and it's like (laughs) what does that mean (laughs) is he going through something too because i remember it's like he he like told his friends he had a work trip and he was gonna sit, stay for a couple nights and like visit her but he lied about that he lied about that just like Okay. He, he lied to her about that. To her about that. That's right. He was literally in his hotel the whole time. He wasn't like sightseeing. It was like he horrible weather. Yeah. And he didn't like really care to be there. He just wanted to see her. Yeah. What's her um 
her Korean name again. It was like, oh, I don't remember. I, I remember they were name. talking about it in the beginning. They were like, we're changing your name to Nora. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what else did you like about the movie? Oh, they're a goodbye. I really did like their goodbye a lot. Her and Na and Hey yeah. yeah. I thought that was like really powerful. So it's like them standing there, like looking at each other. Yeah. And like, I think as the viewer, you're, you're like narrating what you think. Right. The unspoken, what's like what is being spoken. Um, the body language. Yeah. Because it is kind of this moment of like, they have this like space between them and it's like, do you go? Mm-hmm. Or do you stay? What's that song? Should I stay or yeah. should I go? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, and then her husband comes outside, right? I think he was like watching. He was watching and she walks up to him and just falls in his arms like crying. Yeah. And it is this this grief. And like her husband is like there for her. He's like, they're there. You're with me now. <laughs> security but I thought, i'm your white savior i'm oh <laughs> just <God>. kidding <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i thought that was like really beautiful and like i don't know like i thought it just that's what like made the film powerful was like that scene and then the scene of her in her bed with her husband when they're talking those are like the two scenes that i was like wow emotions everything else was like fine but you mm. know but i'm also like maybe i just can't connect to it i don't know and I'm thinking, like, is that the part where everyone was, like, crying over? Some people were like, I felt that. I know what she's going through. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, you must be full of regrets. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't believe that they would still have that connection mm -hmm. from being, like, just children. Like, when you're a kid, you don't have those thoughts, really. Right. You don't have, like, your body's not, like, releasing hormones like, in the same way. I would have believed it more if it was like a college thing, like, mm -hmm. you know, college lovers, like that type of situation. Yeah. That would be more we realistic. We were like adults have, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, every kind of like, quote unquote, like romantic relationship you have as like a kid is just like, unless it was like super traumatizing or, you know, like an abusive spouse <laughs> in no. high school. But yeah, it just seems kind of like whatever. But I could see her kind of like project, like I said, like projecting her ideas about things like, oh, this is my my Arthur on the other side of the world. But mm -hmm. I don't really I feel like for him, I don't I don't do not know. I don't know if it was something like he could tell he liked that she made him feel special or if he actually did really like her. I don't know. The movie ends with him kind of like that car scene when he was a kid. Yeah. So that kind of like puts it in full circle because it like ended their story that way yeah. as a kid and then also that scene where they're like walking separately and there's two paths they show that again that's past lives you guys how many onions i would give this three onions and a kimchi bowl <laughs> <laughs> i think actually i think i would give it three too like i thought it was good but i didn't i wasn't like wow yeah. My final thoughts are I definitely think it's worth a watch, um, but I'd like to think everyone listening has seen it because I'm very anti-spoilers and like, I guess we haven't, I mean, we haven't like totally spoiled the whole movie or anything, but yeah, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. I wish I saw it knowing nothing about it without hearing other people's, because when people are like, this is going to be the biggest movie you go in with like pretty big expectations. Same. I, I liked the movie, but not as much as like. I wanted to. I love the Asian representation. The story of like immigration is really important. And I'm excited to see more of Celine Song's work. Yes. And more of Greta Lee. Mm -hmm. She has a great look. Yeah, she does have a great look. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of this episode. Brittany, where can we find you? You can find me at humble underscore book underscore review on Instagram or Brittany underscore gusto. And where can we find you, Ricky? You can find me at some call me underscore Ricky on Instagram and TikTok. And if you like this episode, you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at Paper Screen Podcasts. And on that note, bye. bye.